Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. You know why I'm out here? So we teach in biblical history who we are according to the Bible, all right? So I got a question real quick. Are you uh, up to date what's been going on in the news as far as concerning the fight that they say against anti-Semitism? A little bit, right? Okay, so let me ask you a question. If we, everything's about the truth, right? Facts, it's based on facts, right? So then I got a question. For the people to claim themselves as the Jews today, right? I got some, I want to read and I want to ask you, do they fit this, right? Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. So this is about the Israelites, right? We're going to see, does this fit the people who claim to be Israel or Israelis today? Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So Egypt goes into bondage, right? It means bondage, bondage means slavery. So the key point I want you to focus on, it says when you look down here, read that part again. Look right here. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord will bring the children of Israel in the future into slavery on ships. Who did that happen to? The black people. That happened to the black people, correct? Yeah. Keep reading. Oh. Right, keep reading. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Meaning the way it was written, that's exactly how it was going to happen. Because remember, they walked out of Egypt with Moses. So he said, he gave him an ultimatum. If you disobey me and you don't keep my laws and you rebel against me, I will send you to serve your enemies if you don't want to serve me. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. So there, if the slave boats docked in Virginia, if they docked in New York, if they docked in Europe, China, Asia, we would be what? And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Were we not sold? You got auction blocks right here. Painted. Were we not sold? By the millions, correct? Keep reading. For, it, right? For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. And no man shall buy you. Meaning nobody could redeem us. Give me Psalms 49, verse 6. Nobody could redeem us. So you have many of our people who are millionaires today, right? Yeah. Not not many, but you have a portion, right? It depends on athletes, you know. Correct, right? Right? And, and they have money today, right? So why is it that with all that money that they collect, right, they can't come into our communities and invest and build it up, and they can't fix our people, huh? Some do, some don't, but if it's on the choice of ourselves. Watch this. Watch this. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 6. Come on. They that trust in their wealth. But So if we trust in our wealth, right, if we think, hey, I made it, I got money now, right, read. And boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Now, so many of our people who walk around flaunting their jewelry, walk around talking about how much money, taking pictures with cash, all these things, right? Remember, the Bible said nobody would be able to redeem us. Read. None of them can by any means redeem his brother. None of them could by any means get that money to come back to the community because there's contracts within what they sign that tell them how they can spend their money. You understand what I'm saying? Read. Nor give to God a ransom from him for him. Right. Nor is there any way they can go to God and try to bribe him like how the Christian church say today. If you want a blessing, you have to what? Give 10% and pay for it. When tithing is not based off of your money, but it was based off your crops that went to the Levites when you read in the scriptures. Right. So now I'm going to swing that back over to what I'm talking about with anti-Semitism. So if we see that this is a curse that happened to the biblical Jews, right? I'm gonna ask you another question. What does the biblical Jews look like? Uh, so I'm gonna ask you another question then. What does uh, Christ look like? No one knows. Right? Right? So, okay, you said in our generation, we don't know, right? Because we've been taught this. Uh, you go to the dollar store on the candle. Hey, hey, my brother right there, bro. I want you to listen up to this. This is highly important. My man, you right there, bro. What's going on? Hey, it, this is the best place to be when you're having a bad day, bro. Read that Revelations 1. Watch this. 
I'm gonna show you something, bro, because I feel what you're saying. We've been taught generation after generation. This is what he looked like. And then if we stray away from this, we say, well, we don't know. But the Bible tells you what our Messiah looks like. And this is what's been hid to us. So if the children of Israel can fit the curses of going into slavery on slave ships, let's see what the Messiah, the king of the children of Israel looks like. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Because we did see Christ. It's recorded in the Bible. Read. Which God gave unto him uh -huh. to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. You, a descendant of the slave trade, you are the servant of God. You are an Israelite by blood. This is not a religious thing. You understand what I'm saying? This is a bloodline thing. This is what was stripped from us when we got off those slave ships and we couldn't read for 300 years. Read. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant, John. Go to verse 14. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says his head and his hairs. The head on his hairs were white and they were woolly in texture. Read. As white as snow. As white as snow. His hair is not woolly, it is not white. And if you take a look right here, this was during the time of the Renaissance when they were doing iconoclasm, when they were repainting over the biblical images of the Israelites. And this is why we grew up seeing white Jesus today. This has passed down from generations. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Christ's eyes is as a flame of fire because he drunk wine in moderation. You know when you get tipsy and the whites of your eyes start to get red and glossy? Christ liked to drink wine, so it made the whites of his eyes red. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. If I take a look at your feet, we take a look at all our feet. Brass is brown. You knew, you know what a penny looks like. That's called a brass copper penny, which is brown. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. Now, if you burn that penny, it turns black. black. So Christ was a dark-skinned man. So the Bible's telling you exactly what he looks like. You understand what I'm saying? So now I'm going to ask you another question. The Bible tells you that Christ is a black man, right? If Kanye West is saying we are true Jews, how are we anti how is it anti-Semitism when you're excluding the biblical description of Christ out of the Bible? Bring it up. That's called reverse psychology. That's called you not knowing your enemy. That's called you not realizing you're at war. And the warfare has become psychological. Hey, my brother. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord.